Imagine a scenario where you have a battery that outputs 12 volts. Now you also have an LED that is rated only for 3 volts. Is there a way to reduce the battery voltage and make it suitable for the LED? Yes, this is exactly what the voltage divider circuit is useful for. At its essence, a voltage divider is just two resistors in series. In our setup, we have two resistors, R1 and R2, each with a resistance of 6 ohms. When the battery voltage is applied across this combination, current begins to flow through these resistors. To visualize this, we can imagine each charge leaving the battery, carrying 12 joules of energy. Another way to say this is that the voltage at this point is 12 volts. Check out our video on voltage for a deeper dive. Now, as the flowing charge encounters the first resistor, R1, it faces a resistance. Some energy needs to be expanded per unit charge to overcome this resistance and move through the resistor. This is usually referred to as a voltage drop across the resistor. Now the question is, how can we quantify this voltage drop? With our example in mind, 12 volts battery and two 6 ohm resistors, we can use Ohm's law to calculate the current flowing in the circuit. Plugging in the values, we get a current of 1 ampere. Given that this is a series circuit, we know that the same current should flow throughout the entire circuit. Therefore, using this current and Ohm's law once more, the voltage drop over the first resistor calculates to be 6 volts. This means that a charge needs to spend 6 joules of energy to cross the resistor. Now this is where things get interesting. After the charge crosses the first resistor, it is now left with only 6 joules of energy. Or a more proper way of saying this is that the voltage at this point, relative to ground, is now at 6 volts. We have essentially divided the battery voltage by half. If a load tapped onto this node, the voltage across that load would also be 6 volts. At this point you may ask, what is the use of the second resistor? Why is it required? The second resistor is crucial. Without it, the full battery voltage would be felt across R1 because there's no other resistance in the circuit to share the voltage. There would be no voltage division. R2, in conjunction with R1, helps in dividing the applied voltage. The voltage across each resistor is proportionate to its resistance. By adjusting the values of R1 and R2, we can fine-tune the voltage at the tapped node. Essentially, both resistors work in tandem to precisely split the voltage, which is why the setup is aptly named a voltage divider. Now, what if we don't want 6 volts? What if we want only 3 volts across the load, as was required by our LED? Well, as you might have guessed already, this is achievable by adjusting the resistance values of the resistors. You might think, let's just tweak the resistance values using Ohm's law until we get what we want, but it's not that direct, and it is quite cumbersome. While Ohm's law is a fundamental principle that governs how voltage, current, and resistance are interrelated, for this specific task, we need something a bit more tailored. Enter the voltage divider equation. This equation is specifically crafted to tell us exactly how much voltage will be across one of the resistors when we know the input voltage and both resistance values. V out is the voltage across, R2. V in is the total input voltage, for example from our battery. R1 and R2 are the resistance values of the resistors in the voltage divider. At first glance, this equation might seem like it's come out of the blue. However, it's derived from combining Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. We will discuss Kirchhoff's voltage law in another upcoming video. So, if you wanted exactly 3 volts for the LED in our example, we can rearrange the above equation to this form. First select the resistor value for R1. We will keep it at 6 ohms. Plugging in the values, we get an R2 of 2 ohms. Perfect. We now have our desired voltage divider. However, before we celebrate too much, thinking we have cracked the code, there's a practical aspect we haven't touched upon yet. Something we have to be careful with. That is the resistance of the load, in this case, our LED. When we use a voltage divider to supply a load, like an LED, that load isn't just a passive recipient of the voltage. The load itself has inherent resistance. Now, you might be wondering, why does that matter? 
Well, when you connect the LED to the voltage divider's tap node, it effectively becomes a part of the circuit. The LED's resistance, combined with the resistors, changes the dynamic of the voltage division. Ideally, we'd want the resistance, or impedance, of our LED, or any load, to be much higher than that of our R2. Why is that? Because if the load's resistance is comparable to or lower than R2, it can effectively act as a parallel resistor to R2, altering the desired voltage at the tapped node. The more the load's resistance deviates from this ideal high-impedance scenario, the further our real-world voltage will drift from the intended 3 volts. In simpler terms, a high-impedance load will observe the voltage without drawing much current, and thus not disturb our meticulously set voltage division. However, a low-impedance load would pull more current, affecting the voltage division. Hopefully, this deep dive has illuminated the intricacies of voltage dividers for you. If you appreciate this kind of detailed content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in, and see you in the next video.